Okay. Thank you very much for the first uh, kind invitation first. Uh, Dr. Matre asked me to show you some, uh, some uh, uh, techniques what we use here in Budapest. So the aim of the partial breast irradiation, of course, reduce the target volume. We focus on the excision cavity plus uh, the safety margin. And of course, uh, the second big advantage is the reduction of the treatment time from three to six weeks to one or uh, five days. We can decrease uh, uh, the time where, uh, when the patient has to uh, miss work or family life. So it's uh, really very uh, comfortable for the patients. We have many techniques here, uh, like interstitial brachytherapy, multicatheter brachytherapy, intracavitary brachytherapy, monocyte, or some hybrid applicators, 3D conformal uh, external beam radiotherapy, intraoperative radiotherapy. We use image guided uh, intensity modulated uh, radiotherapy with LINAC or uh, cyber knife, and also proton therapies also exist. We don't have proton machine, but it is accessed. The first uh, partial breast uh, study uh, starts in uh, 1998 with Professor Polgar. He uh, randomized the patient in two arms, the conventional 50 gray uh, whole breast irradiation and the partial breast irradiation. Uh, the partial breast irradiation arm uh, split in two different uh, radiotherapy techniques, uh, seven time uh, 5.2 gray HDR brachytherapy and 50 gray conventional fractionation electron therapy. Uh, here you can see the uh, brachytherapy implant characteristics. As you see, he used uh, most of the patient uh, two or three uh, plans. As you see, the uh, DNR and coverage indexes are not so good, uh, but uh, nowadays we use more more strict dose uh, uh, dose coverage. Uh, the crude rate of uh, of the events didn't show any uh, difference between the two arms, uh, and uh, the local recurrence rate uh, wasn't significantly. Uh, better with the whole breast irradiation arm. The annual local recurrence rate was around 0 0.5, 0.6%. So that was the first uh, study, yes. And he also uh, concluded that uh, with uh, HDR brachytherapy, the grade three teleangiectasia was significantly better in the uh, HDR brachytherapy arm. And uh, the cosmetic results, results was also uh, significantly better with, with brachytherapy. After this phase two study, we joined to the Jacquestro ABPI trial. And uh, uh, in 2016, the five-year results was published at the Lancet Oncology. Uh, here we use the Jacquestro recommendation patient uh, older than uh, 40 years, in-situ carcinomas or invasive carcinomas less than three centimeters uh, without uh, macroscopic lymph node inv uh, in invasion or uh, distant metastase. And the very important thing, the surgical margin must have uh, more than two centimeter without lymphovascular invasion or uh, extensive introductal component. After the randomization, uh, patient receive whole breast irradiation, 50 gray plus 10 gray tumor bed boost, or received uh, accelerated partial breast irradiation with interstitial brachytherapy. With each HDR, there were there was two uh, fractionation, eight times four gray, or here in Budapest we use the seven times four point three gray, but uh, the majority of the centers use uh, PDR uh, brachytherapy. Uh, <clears throat> patient uh, received the, this treatment with CT image guided interstitial uh, multicatheter brachytherapy. So we did a pre-implant CT with the template and we calculate how, how many uh, 
plants and needles are need to cover this uh, target. After the, the rigid uh, needle in insertion, we replaced them with flexible catheters and we did uh, post implant CT also and we make the uh, delineation on that, that CT. Uh, as you know, this uh, protocol, uh, Tibor Mayor published this in the Green Journal, uh, you know the far formula 20 millimeter minus the, uh, the surgical uh, margin and it's a unique margin, so not a, not a uniform margin in every direction. Uh, we calculate uh, every uh, surgical margin in, in each direction. And as you see, we use a uh, more strict uh, coverage index above 90% and uh, the DNR must have less than uh, 0.35. Uh, the crude rate of events shows no difference between the two arms and uh, uh, at five years, the non-inferiority between the two arms has been uh, confirmed. Professor Pogar uh, published the side effects and the uh, cosmetic results in 2017 at the Lancet Oncology. He found there wasn't significant difference uh, in all grade 2-3 side effects and in terms of grade 2-3 fibrosis, but he found uh, significant difference uh, in terms of grade two, three skin side effects. Uh, uh, the cosmetic results was was the same with the two techniques. And uh, Rebecca Schaefer uh, published the third Lancet uh, publication uh, in this uh, from this uh, uh, study. He uh, published the quality of life. Uh, in 2018, and he found uh, with uh, ABPI the uh, baseline and the three and uh, six months uh, quality of life was much better with uh, with uh, ABPI. So after this, uh, or uh, or uh, uh, machines was renewed. We get uh, more modern machines and we were able to do the 3D conformal and image guided radiotherapy. We start the 3D conformal therapy in 2006 and we treat 44 patients in a uh, phase two uh, study. And uh, we receive, uh, the patient received 36.9 uh, gray. That's uh, nine times 4.1 gray. Uh, day for, uh, for five consecutive days. So this is a twice a day uh, fractionation. Um, we use the same uh, target definition as, as, uh, as the previous uh, studies. And with 3D conformal radiotherapy, we use 10 millimeter uh, CTV, PTV margin. And with image guided, we use only five millimeter. Uh, on that time, we have these artist machines with on real uh, kilovoltage CT. Uh, we did verification CT before each fraction. We rotate the patient 180 degree and do the verification CT and rotate the patient back, make the image fusion, and uh, with the help of the Van Herk formula, we calculate uh, the uh, setup inaccuracies and the setup corrections, and we find uh, that five millimeter is enough with daily uh, image guidance. Uh, in terms of uh, crude rate of events, uh, we found three local recurrence. Uh, all patients received max mastectomy uh, after after the recurrence, and the six year local recurrence rate was. 1.1 percent, so it, it is acceptable. Uh, the side effects are mild, let's say mild. Uh, there's, there was only one grade three or four uh, fibrosis, late fibrosis. Uh, at the uh, IMRT, image guided IMRT arm, there wasn't a grade two or worst 
uh, side effects at all. Uh, the cosmetic results are great, uh, 94 percent of the patient had good or excellent cosmetic results. And uh, we think the cosmetic results and the, the serious uh, toxicity is uh, uh, because of the big volume and uh, the main uh, advantage of the image guidance is to uh, reduce the uh, CTV, PTV margin. And as you see, we use only uh, 115 cubic centimeter PTV uh, on this treatment and uh, the other, the Florence uh, study and the Miami study also have very small uh, PTVs and uh, the other uh, rapid trial and uh, the Tufts uh, trial, uh, they used more than or almost 300 cubic centimeter. This we think this is the main reason because they have just uh, 70 or 80 percent uh, good cosmetic results. Nowadays we have the cyber knife machine and uh, we start the partial breast irradiation with, uh, with, uh, with this machine also. We implant the uh, four fiducial marker around the tumor bed. Uh, so uh, and uh, we use the same uh, contouring protocol, but we add only two millimeter uh, CTV PTV margin. Uh, the fractionation is four times 6.25 gray. And uh, here you can see the, the treatment, the patient lie on the table, head first supine position, be harmfully bended uh, the lady's arm because the treatment is, is relatively long and we found it is more comfortable for the patient to uh, bend the, their arms. Uh, we do a rough uh, patient positioning by spine tracking, but after all, uh, the machine found the gold markers, the four gold markers, and uh, we uh, record the patient breath cycle and the re real time tacking starts and we can uh, we are able to uh, receive the, the treatment. Uh, here you can see the treatment volumes with three uh, the CRT with one centimeter uh, safety margin. Uh, it is almost three times larger than with brachytherapy, with image guidance, half centimeter uh, CTV, PTV margin. It is twice big as with uh, brachytherapy, with cyber knife, two millimeter margin, it's uh, around one and a half uh, times uh, larger than, than brachytherapy. So brachy is the best uh, we can say, but but uh, cyber knife is, is not, not, not an invasive uh, treatment. Uh, we try to uh, shrink the treatment time also. Uh, the Jacques Estro has the v VIPB study. This is a very accelerated partial breast irradiation. It starts at 2017 and it is ended. Six European centers joined to this study. We treat 30 patients with 4.25 gray and 30 patients with three times 7.45 gray. We weight the long-term cosmetic results and toxicity results. And later, if we have these follow up, we would like to give just one single fraction for this patient, one times 18 or one times uh, 21 gray with uh, multi-catheter brachytherapy. So this, this will be the future. And uh, here, what I, I, I uh, already talked about the Jacques Estro patient recommendation. As you see, we use uh, partial breast only and the low risk group, so above 15 years, uh, intraductal carcinomas, so without uh, multifocality or, or multicentricity. Uh, the DCIS is not allowed. 
uh, the grade doesn't matter. We treat any grade. The tumor size is less than 30 centimeter. The surgical uh, margin must be uh, more than two millimeter and uh, extensive interductal component and lymphovascular inv invasion are not allowed. Uh, the hormonal status or uh, the neoadjuvant chemotherapy uh, are not mm, inclusion criteria, but we never use uh, uh, partial breast in, in high risk group and, and, uh, uh, and in intermediate group. And this is our decision making. If the patient is good candi candidate according to the pathologic report, uh, we ask the patient what she would like. Uh, if the pathologic report is, is wrong or contraindicated, we give uh, always Holbrecht irradiation. Maybe the boost treatment can be uh, given with uh, with uh, uh, um, HDR IL boost. So the patient uh, choice the uh, ABPI. We see the uh, CT images. If it's technically unsuitable because of uh, uh, the visibility score is not not well, or there's uh, some discrepancy about the clinic and uh, the preoperative mammography and and uh, the tumor bed, uh, we say that technically. Uh, unsuitable, so we, uh, the patient receive whole breast irradiation. And if it's technically fits uh, for EGRT uh, or uh, brachytherapy, and the patient can also choose which treatment uh, she would like. So uh, multi-catheter brachytherapy and external beam image guided IMRT are only the evidence-based standard treatments. Uh, image guided multi catheter brachytherapy uh, aim is uh, no additional ptv uh, to the to the ctv so uh, the minimum volume uh, uh, is uh, the best volume is is with uh, brachytherapy with image guidance uh, 5 mm ptv ctv margin is needed and we uh, still uh, calculate the uh, cyber knife margin two millimeters is, is enough. So, and the future, just one slide. Uh, Professor Polgar asked me to uh, to uh, show this uh, gram. Uh, this is a, a future uh, study uh, for the Jacques Castro ABPU group. Uh, they would like to uh, treat uh, ladies more than. A, uh, 16 years old, so elderly ladies, uh, after breast cancer, breast conserving therapy. And uh, there's two randomization. First is to give or not to give endocrine therapy because there's uh, a lot of uh, publication in nowadays uh, which uh, uh, present uh, very serious side effects of, of uh, endocrine therapy uh, for these patients. And, uh, and the second randomization is the uh, radiotherapy randomization. Uh, they receive uh, one single 16 gray fraction or the uh, usual seven times 4.3 uh, gray fractionation. So Professor Polgar asked me to to tell you if you uh, if you want to join this uh, Jacques Astro study, you are uh, welcome. And uh, the only uh, criteria is uh, for this study: uh, uh, one center must uh, mm, uh, randomize minimum twenty patients. So this is the only criteria. Okay. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for your presentation. It's a good result. It's very interesting. And uh, Sergey, what do you think about randomized study in our center in this uh, design? No, honestly, first of all, I'd like to thank you for very interesting uh, and very useful presentation. Uh, uh, secondly, I'd like to thank you. Maybe firstly, I'd like to thank to thank you for this uh, randomized, randomized, random.
under my study because we were talking not far ago last week last week or two weeks ago we were talking in moscow about the possibility of uh, the, the the discussion was uh, to radiate or or not to radiate patients with uh, luminal a breast cancer small uh, after conserving surgery and endocrine therapy and we proposed stop endocrine uh, therapy and uh, um, and um, still go on irradiation and this is logical question because we can use this or that and uh, breast conserving surgery and radiation for me like <laughs> radiation oncology seems much more promising of course but in 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 in, in everyday reality i think that it is most more safety for the patients honestly if it would be possible to randomize 20 patients and this is not question for us but more for our surgeons then of course we would be very we would be very happy to participate and I think that it would be uh, meeting Jack Astor, not Jack Astor, it would be Brachy, Electro Brachy School uh, in, in May in St. Petersburg. I think we can discuss this question again. And probably it would be possible to, to go together. I have very small question concerning cyber knife. It is very interesting, uh, not, not routine practice, of course. How long um, is lasting the session? it is interesting for us and did you try to perform uh, post session uh, verification images i know that you are you make the images during the session every time but it would be interesting to compare what was in the at the entrance and what was at the exit in order to understand is this two millimeter of uh, safety margin is enough for these patients but this would be very interesting to hear Yes. So uh, the door-to-door -door time, the average door-to-door -door time is uh, 43 minutes. So it's a long treatment. Uh, it's true. But uh, we see some learning curves uh, uh, for the uh, radiation therapist assistant. Uh, when we start the first patient, treatment holds more than an hour. But nowadays it is, uh, it is uh, around 30 minutes. So the average is, is uh, 43 minutes right now. Mm -hmm. And yes, we don't know uh, is, uh, this margin is, is enough. We still, or physicians still calculate and uh, still check uh, all kind of uh, 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 verification images. And uh, we hope this will be enough because of the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, image guidance and uh, because uh, the respiratory movement uh, management uh, we will see we already treat 35 patients uh, we don't have long-term follow-up results but but we will see thanks a lot Okay, colleague anybody want to say anything for this presentation or these terms today I, I have a small question for uh, Dr. Zoltan Matrai um, regarding the evaluation of the aesthetic outcomes after uh, partial breast irradiation and brachytherapy. I mean, uh, we've seen the charts, we've seen the results of several trials where the uh, aesthetic outcome was evaluated. And I would, uh, the question is, uh, regarding your cases, have you been evaluating those patients with the standard techniques you use for uh, oncoplastic and breast conserving surgery uh, aesthetic outcome evaluation results? Have you been using your computed techniques uh, and, or just questionnaires and physical evaluation? If I can understand you uh, correctly, uh, from the standpoint of uh, accelerated partial irradiation, you mean, or whole breast irradiation? No, I mean, the... I mean brachytherapy patients, because there is a common uh, thing, there is a common understanding that brachytherapy is associated with more fibrosis. This is a common fear amongst uh, breast surgeons, yeah. that brachytherapy yeah. is associated with more fibrosis, with more yeah. breast deformities, and it can yeah. lead aesthetic outcomes to a drastic situation. Yeah. But I'm, uh, I know that you are very 
cautious with the evaluation of the aesthetic results. And uh, so uh, the question is, are you satisfied generally with the aesthetic outcomes of the partial breast radiation with brachytherapy? Yeah, actually, as uh, showed before, we have, or the Institute or our colleagues have um, uh, definite and correct data from, uh, from our cases. Uh, our publications uh, uh, aimed uh, the oncoplastic cases of several techniques in the last uh, couple of years. We've published uh, in different journals. Uh, the D cases were treated with uh, or have been treated with, uh, with whole breast irradiation, all of them. So we don't have the detailed data or we don't have correlation uh, from the standpoint of, uh, of the surgical uh, uh, of the surgical uh, eyes, a surgical point of view, or different evaluation, like our colleagues from the Department of uh, Radiotherapy. But they have the data, and uh, as showed before, they have uh, the, there were no significant difference between the between the between the the, the partial breast irradiation and brachytherapy and whole breast irradiation. Uh, but uh, uh, as far as I know, there were no sub subgroups of, uh, of uh, classical breast conserving surgery or, or, uh, or uh, oncoplastic breast uh, surgical cases. So we are not able, I'm, I, I fear that we are, I have, I cannot, a, we are not able to, 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 to tell you the correct answer if we have uh, differences between the two subgroups of, uh, according to the breast conserving surgical technique and uh, and uh, partial breast irradiation and whole breast irradiation. So, uh, in this study, the the, the radiotherapy uh, studies, uh, I think uh, we don't had the different subgroups according to the type of surgery. Isn't it? Yes, it is. This is completely true. Yes, yes. Thank you. Sub subjectively, subjectively, of course, everybody has uh, single cases where after the, um, in, in a second session, if the patient had a recurrence, uh, local recurrence in the breast, and of course, from the remnant, uh, from the remnant breast parenchyma, we are able to re-excise the tumor and place the brachytherapy catheters and, and a brachytherapy and a partial breast uh, uh, irradiation is given for the, the secondary breast conserving uh, surgical cases. And of course, uh, uh, single cases we have, we had of course uh, uh, serious complications and we had to use uh, uh, intercostal perforator flaps uh, and to correct the, the fibrosis and so on and so on. But the, the, the difference between the evidence-based medicine and that kind of uh, single cases uh, to extrapole and project uh, that single uh, result for the next 10 years of pr clinical practice, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, not, uh, it's not uh, fully correct. That's the way, uh, from that uh, point of view, uh, these studies um, are performed in our institute by the colleagues uh, of the radiotherapy department. Uh, so we don't have the, the, the detailed uh, result uh, uh, from that point of view. But this is a very good topic. And I'm happy that, uh, that uh, Professor Pogar is able to offer you that, uh, uh, that study. And it's a possible point uh, of uh, a joint uh, uh, a scientific activity between the two institutes. So I, I, I think uh, uh, to join such kind of uh, uh, international prospective randomized study uh, could be a good aim for us, for surgeons as well, probably for the future, uh, to do uh, common studies uh, inter international or between the two institutes.